York City. Lots of guests and fun to get to. We'll talk Thursday Night Football in just a bit. But first, let's say good morning to Will Selva, who's at Manning the News Desk out in L.A. He is a Hall of Fame Twitter liker. Yeah, big liker. Oh, big awesome in the like. favorite game, yes. my friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to build up that, that base, right? Mm -hmm. So... How do you do it? Bing, bing, <laughs> bing. Hashtag Trying brand. to follow Nate's, Nate's follow, uh, you know? I'm trying to follow his lead. Um, all right. Right, Nate? Is that not right? That's what you do? I do it. I like everything I see. If it's in my feet, I'm going to like it. Nate also blocks, don't you, Nate? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't play. Afraid to block. Say, don't play. Some, say something crazy about the crew, yeah. you're getting blocked right away. <laughs> Finally, we found a wide receiver who blocks. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, oh. Yo. Hey, no. The best blocking wide out in the game. <laughs> Somebody's a jokester. Hey, now. All right, let's get to uh, the news here, guys. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Remember when the Giants were considered a Super Bowl contender? Yeah, me neither. That was a long time ago. The Giants are staring at a one in six abyss, and the only thing staring back is the prospect of more losses. The Giants' defense. Ranking 27th in the league, giving up nearly 380 yards a game, while quarterback Eli Manning has had to deal with losses from his wide receiving core. Chief among them, Adele Beckham Jr. His passer rating is 86.1, and the offense ranks near the bottom in most offensive categories. General Manager Jerry Reese shoulders the blame for the team's struggles. The roster that I put together, okay, I, I'm the reason we're one and six. But we do have to play better as a team. Uh, so, again, we lose together, we win together. Uh, I, I believe everybody is, is accountable here for, for, for what goes on. Our coaches are accountable, our players are accountable. Um, we're one and six together, um, but you can put it all on me. The Seahawks need help with the pass rush, and veteran defensive end Dwight Freeney needs a gig. They both made the perfect match as Freeney inks a one-year deal as reported by NFL Network's Tom Pelissero. Cliff Averill is on injured reserve and Michael Bennett is dealing with a foot injury, so Freeney's presence on defense will be welcomed. One person, one person rather, who's happy to have Freeney in Seattle, quarterback Russell Wilson. After finding out about the news, Wilson tweeting out, excited to have my homie Dwight Freeney join the squad. And when Dwight Freeney tweeted out the news, he said, time to get loud 12s. Dwight Freeney also had said that he had been contemplating retirement since 2012. But as Pete Carroll has said, you can never have too many pass rushers on your roster, Nate. And last time he came off the couch and onto the field, he ended up leading his team in sacks. So I'm excited to see also what right. Freeney does on the field. I appreciate it, Will. Good job. All right, thank you, Nate. See you in a little bit. Sounds good. Now, coming to us live all the way from Buffalo as a seven year vet in his first season with the Bills. He's one of the key cogs in his defense that ranks fourth in the league, allowing just 16.8 point, points per game. Welcome, former third round pick out of USC. Welcome, Bills cornerback Sharice Wright. Good morning. Sharice, what's, what's up, Sharice? What up? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate you joining us. Now, last time we talked, you're just taking a $600 Uber ride from Chicago <laughs> to Buffalo just to attend OTAs. You said you and your driver were still keeping in contact. Have you seen or talked to him since? <laughs> um, I talked to him not too long ago. Um, you know, just about his journey ever since, man. So it was about a, about a month ago that I talked to him. That's crazy. So he's doing well. He's doing, he's doing well. He's doing That's well. amazing. Giving rides. <laughs> well, the, the only thing crazier or more yeah. wild than that is the fact that, and tell me if this is true or not because I almost don't believe it, a teammate of yours, a receiver, Brandon Riley, he actually got stuck in the same exact situation, guys, same places as well. During the bye week, he took an Uber from Chicago to Buffalo. Is this is what the kids are doing these days. I don't, how does, what do you have to say about that? Hey, I mean... Is is getting back to doing whatever you gotta do to get here, man? It's did that happen? Good thing he thought about it. He said he thought, of, yeah, it really did happen. And I didn't believe it. And guys were telling me about it. I'm like, ah, that he didn't he didn't do that. And come to find out, he did. And he said he thought about me once his flight, you know, was he missed his flight due to it being delayed leaving Nebraska. He told me he thought about me. And he thought, shoot, at least I have an option to do that. The same thing happened. The first two guys canceled on him. The third guy, he called him. He did exactly what I did, and he made it here. I'm going to Chicago this weekend. I will keep that in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah, you got a plan. You got a plan. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah, Chicago's Cerise. Chicago's the worst. We're giving the 2017 Bills a five star rating. All right, you're off to a force two start. It is one of the coolest stories in the league, but let me just give you this from a fan perspective. 
The, the narrative with Buffalo is always get off to a good start and then the Patriots come running and the thing tapers off. We want to see Buffalo finish this thing. Why is this Bills team destined to finish what they started? Oh, man, we just, the culture that Coach McDermott is building around here is, is, is we're not, we can't worry about what happened last year. We're, we're a new team and we're, we're, we're on to new things and we're, we're trying to make the difference around here and be that team that, that, that does what we haven't done around here in a long time. And it's, it's something special going on and, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of that. I know we're resistant in the NFL to give too much love to rookies, but I've been watching this Trey White. And he is off to an incredible start. He leads the entire league in pass breakups, and he made the play of the game on Sunday, forcing Adam Humphreys into that fumble that led up the game winning field goal. So here's a rookie at LSU, Trey White. He comes in. You're coming in new off the team. What do you see from this guy, and just how good can he be? Oh, man, the, the, the sky's the limit for, for this player. He's, you know, he's a great player. He comes from a great. A great college, you know, at that at LSU, you know, they produce some of the top DBs in the league, and you know, he he talks to Patrick Peterson all the time. He's one of those guys he look up to, and you know, he he's a he's a great athlete. He's a smart player. He's it's hard sometimes you forget he's a rookie, you know, and and the way he plays and the way he approaches the game and the way he takes notes in the meetings and the way he prepares himself, and it, it shows in his success. Sharice, let's spin this thing forward and let's talk some wide receivers. You guys faced the Raiders this week and Amari Cooper, he's coming off one of the biggest receiving games the league has seen this season. What's the key to slowing down Amari Cooper right. and even Crabtree out there for the Raiders? I mean, we start over here, man. It starts with the front seven. Um, a great pass for us makes a, a, a great a great secondary and we're just going to live by that and we're not every week that's the same approach we take and uh, it's going to take a team it's not one guy it's not it's just going to take a great game plan against those guys and you know to put us in position to make plays and us as players is to compete with those guys and this is what it's all about I mean the secondary this is you know this is what the type of games you look for you know games that they you know they're going to throw the ball a lot of 11 personnel all one personnel the ball's coming out and they got a great quarterback and great receivers and we're looking forward to this. Sharice, I like to uh, nerd out over numbers, like the big, big like phone book of research packet material they give us uh, after each week and leading into the next week. I thought it was right. so weird going into week seven, teams collectively had a losing record at home. Under 500 at home, like where's the home field advantage? Buffalo undefeated at home. So if you were to, with your best guess, answer why. Why are you undefeated there? Man, I mean, just something we, we take pride in. It's something that, you know, McDermott preaches to protect our, tur our dirt, you know. And during camp, he gave us a jar, man, with, with some dirt from, from, from the field. And he gave it to every single player and it's in our locker. And we just always remind ourselves, we got to protect, yeah, we, we got to protect our, protect our dirt. And that's, you know, we know we can win at home. We have a great chance of doing big things. Protect our dirt. Protect our dirt. That's got to be on a t-shirt and That's a bumper great. sticker. I want to hear more about that. Is that great. something you guys talk about? Is that your rally cry? Because it should be. They're three and zero there. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's what we rally up on, and we remind ourselves, protect our dirt. This is our home field, and what our fans, man, our fans are amazing. Um, man, it's, it's one of, I mean, being on, on the side when, when, you know, I played in Buffalo a few times, but being on the opposite side when, you know, when you're on the team and you're making plays on offense and defense and the crowd, man, when the Tredavis made that play, the, the stadium erupted, man. It was, you know, our fans do a great job of making it loud and just bringing that energy um, to the field for us, to, you know, to give us that extra, you know, boost that we need as players, man, to lock in. Sharice, before you go, I want to nerd out on some numbers, too. So you're on the field of the last play of the game against the Bucks. You're up three. And they start laddering the ball all over the field in a play that went on for 45 seconds and had 10 laterals. So you're out there. What are you doing while this is going on? Are, are, are you laughing? Are you watching? <laughs> uh, tell us, take us onto the field for this. I mean, if you if you see me on there, I'm I'm I probably moved about five yards the whole play. I just kind of <laughs> stayed in my stayed in my spot, and it's one of those things they they can't throw the ball forward. All they can do is is throw it backwards, and that's what they kept doing. It's like I don't know. I just kind of made sure I stayed in my zone and didn't, didn't let them run by on my side of the field type of thing. But 
uh, you know, guys do this. Have, look like they have fun chasing those guys around. <laughs> look at this going. <laughs> 45 seconds. They're getting two yards. You guys got 600 yeah. bucks. We'll each pay 200, get an Uber yes. to get him from Buffalo to 2 yes. I'm an Uber. Actually, you're a lot closer. It'll probably be like a $200 Uber. Shotgun. Ian, you have an official invitation yeah, to studio. I don't need you that. hung out with us twice now. Yeah. Third time is a New York City visit. Promise? All right.